Tonight, I want to talk to you about a character in the Bible whose name is Barabbas. If you do not know who Barabbas is, he was a prisoner during the time of Christ uh, when he was on trial. And <clears throat> Barabbas is mentioned in the Gospels Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. He was on death row during the time that Christ, Jesus Christ was on trial. It was tradition for one prisoner to be let free. Let's get right into it. Point number one, he was guilty. Read with me Luke 23, 13 through 19. And Pilate, when he had called together to the chief priests and the rulers and the people, said unto them, Ye have brought this man unto me as one that preventeth the people, and behold, I have examined him before you, and have found no fault in this man, touching those things wherefore you accuse him. No, nor yet Herod, for I sent you to him, and lo, nothing worthy of death is done unto him. I will therefore chastise him and release him. For of necessity he must be released, released one unto them at the feast. And they cried out all at once, saying, Away with this man, and release unto us Barabbas, who for a certain sedition made in the city and for murder was cast into prison. I want to focus on that last verse right there, verse 19. Who for a certain sedition made in the city. You see, the definition of sedition is to rebel against authority. You see, he rebelled against authority and in so was sentenced to death. Isaiah 53, 6 says, All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of all of us. <clears throat> How often do we rebel against God and what he wants for our life? We said so much, we should be on death row. We should be the ones to die. We deserve the cross and we deserve death. You see, he was a murderer. In that same verse, it says, For a certain sedition made in the city and for murder was cast into prison. He was a murderer. He most likely killed a Roman soldier because in Mark 15, 7, it says, and there was one, was one named Barabbas, which lay bound with them and had made insurrection with him who had committed murder in the insurrection. The meaning of insurrection is a violent uprising against an authority or government. It says he killed someone in the insurrection, so it most likely was a Roman soldier, and that's why he was on death row and was to be crucified. <clears throat> he killed someone in sin, so he deserved death. That was the, there was a reason for him to die. He deserved the cross. In 1 John 3.15, it says, Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. What this verse is saying is when we hate somebody, we are basically murdering them in our heart. We aren't taking action on these thoughts, but, <clears throat> but the drive that pushes someone to kill is still there. When we ignore somebody and block them out, we are basically acting as if they were dead. <clears throat> how often do we murder in our hearts? How often do we hate others? And how often are we like Barabbas and we are murderers and deserve death and deserve the cross? Point number two, he was condemned. Luke 23, 19 says, For a certain sedition made in the city and for murder was cast into prison. He was a pri imprisoned. He was cast into prison and he was a prisoner. He was locked up for his sin. How often do we feel imprisoned to our sin? How often do we feel like we are locked up for our sins and we can't escape? How often do we feel like we can't escape this cycle of sin? <clears throat> He was bound. Mark 15, 7 says, And there was one named Barabbas, which lay bound with them, that had made insurrection with him and who had committed murder in the insurrection. He was bound because he had committed murder and had to be punished. He was chained and was not free. He sinned and deserved to be shackled. How often are we chained to our sin and we can't be free from it? How often do we feel like we can't break the chains of sin? He was also sentenced. He was sentenced and on death row. He was to be crucified. He was to die on the cross for his actions. He deserved everything that was happening to him and everything that was going to happen to him. Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal th life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We deserve death. We deserve hell for all of our sins, and we deserve everything Barabbas deserved and more. We are sinners. We are Barabbas. Jesus deserved nothing. He was perfect. He didn't sin. He didn't do anything. He wasn't a murderer. He didn't deserve to be bound and imprisoned. But yet he did it for us. Let me tell you what Jesus did for you. 
You see, he was scourged with the cat of nine tails 39 times. His flesh being ripped from his back, his bones being pulled out of joint. He was mocked and spit upon. A crown of thorns made up, that were made up of one to two inch long thorns was placed upon his head. As blood ran down his face and his back, a robe was placed upon his body. As the blood started to dry and his back began to scab over, attaching the robe to his back, he then carried a cross that was around 110 pounds and walked 5,000 plus feet. They then take his robe off, ripping the dry skin and the scabs off of his back. They put him on the cross, that, and, the, and he was nailed to the cross, a nail in each wrist and a nail in each ankle. You can imagine the pain he felt when all of his weight were on, was on his ankles <clears throat> that were nailed to the cross. He could inhale, but to exhale, he would have to pull himself up, his back with barely any skin on it, being rubbed against the wood of the cross. He tries to breathe. He hears people screaming at him and mocking him. His mother crying at his feet. He's dehydrated and tired. All of a sudden, he yells out these three words, it is finished. And this is what Jesus did for Barabbas. This is what Jesus did for you. Point number three, he was redeemed. In Mark 15, 15, it says, and so Pilate, willing to content the people, released Barabbas unto him. He was released unto them. He walked among the people. I can imagine Barabbas thinking that the people set him free. I can imagine the people thinking th that the people love him and he, they wanted him free. In reality, it was the son of God that set him free. It was the almighty, all-powerful Jesus that took his place and released him from his sins. When Jesus died on the cross, he died for us. He died for your sins. Barabbas was alive. He was alive and he didn't die that awful death. He didn't die on the cross. Jesus took his place. He lived on and went on with his life while Jesus died this excruciating death. Romans 6, 11 says, Likewise, reckon ye also yourself to be dead, indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. If you have the Holy Spirit in you, you're alive in Christ, and you are a child of God, and you will live forever in heaven. Barabbas was also free. He was free and could go on with his life. He wasn't in prison anymore. He wasn't bound and in shackles. He was free. Romans 6, 22, it says, but now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and, in, and the end everlasting life. We are free. Jesus died on the cross for you and for me. He broke the shackles of sin. Whatever sin you feel in prison to, whether it be drinking, lust, cursing, anger, bitterness, whatever sin you are in prison to, and whatever sin you can't escape, Jesus saved you from it. Jesus took your place on the cross and died that awful death. You shouldn't be in prison to your sin anymore. You can be free. See, the interesting thing about this story is how much we are like Barabbas. You see, the, Barabbas was translated from the Greek word baraba, which means son of the father. Isn't that amazing? You see, Barabbas and us are the same. We are the son of the father. We are the son of God. We are set free.